We're going to take a few minutes and talk about taking resistance measurements with a digital multimeter. And uh, we really need to know what we're doing and how we are doing it as a basic question. But I also wrote down four other questions. The first one is, what quantity are we looking for? The second one is, what's the test lead placement on our digital multimeter? And then we also want to know, does polarity matter when we take this measurement? And then finally, uh, are we working with live circuits here? And so let's talk about this for a moment first on these four questions. First of all, the quantity we're looking for is, is resistance measured in, in terms of ohms. And so we're going to take ohm measurements. That's the first question answered. And as far as test lead placement, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll place them here in a moment. And you'll see that the black goes in the common, and then the red lead goes in the volt ohm port of the meter. And uh, polarity in this particular kind of measurement does not matter. It doesn't matter where you place the red lead or the black lead, and that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about polarity. And finally, are we working with live circuits? The answer is absolutely not. On this type of a test, the power that we use for taking measurements is actually coming from a, a onboard battery within the digital multimeter, and we do not want to be working on energized circuits. I'm Mitch Hegman. I'm a professional educator and a master electrician. And today I would really like to take you through all of the different steps and all the procedures when taking measure with a digital multimeter for a resistance measurement. And uh, what we'll do here in a moment is I will go off screen and we're going to take a little bit closer look at the meter itself so you can see exactly what we're doing. The very first thing we need to do is set up the meter and talk a little bit about what's going on here when we set it up and what we can expect to see. And uh, then we'll do a measurement. So the very first thing is we talked about placing the leads in the ports. And you can see this is the volt ohm uh, port here and that accepts the red lead. So we can plug that one in here. And the common lead goes here in the black. And that takes care of that. And we already discussed that it's not polarity sensitive. I do want to say when you're taking measurements on resistance or for resistance, you want to make sure whatever part or circuit you are measuring is isolated from other circuits so you don't, you don't uh, detect those circuits. You want to make sure you're measuring only what you're trying to measure. And then the next thing we want to do is we'll, we'll cycle on to the, the setting we want, which is ohms. You can see the little ohm symbol right here for resistance measurements. And the first thing you'll notice is we're showing OL on the screen, which indicates out of range. In other words, it's taking no measurement or it's maximum resistance, it's not seeing anything. The other thing you'll notice, and I'm hoping you can see this fairly clearly, is there's a capital M and the ohm symbol. And the M is a prefix for mega ohms. This particular meter has three, well, it has more than three ranges, but three basic ranges. It has mega ohm range, which is one million. Uh, so a measurement of one in the mega ohm range would be one million. Then it has a kilo ohm range, which is thousands. So if you had a one, well, you were in a kilo ohm range, that would indicate a measurement of a thousand, and then it has an ohm range. And this is also an auto ranging multimeter, meaning it goes through all the profile when taking a measurement and selects the proper measurement you need, and it will pick up anything within in the mega ohm, kilo ohm range and automatically display it for you or the ohm range too, I should add that too. So that gives you some idea of how all this works. And so the next thing we will do is take a look at a couple measurements. So let me get set up to do that. Now that we've set up to take our resistance measurements, the first thing we'll do is we'll take a, a just for fun, we'll take a resistance measurement on this, this set of pliers, and I'm going to take a resistance measurement on each side of the fulcrum. And I really expect a fairly low resistance value because this is metal. And it's a very good conductor of electricity, so it should not be very high. So we'll turn this thing back on again, our digital multimeter. And you can see we go to OL because we are not getting a measurement. And it's also telling you, if you look at the, at the range, or excuse me, at the display here, it's got an M and the ohm symbol, so it's in mega ohms. It's automatically starting at the mega ohm setting. And the first thing we need to do is make sure our meter is functioning. So I touch the, the test leads together. And then you see I get a 0 0.01, which tells me I, uh, my meter is working fine. And I have 0.1 ohms of resistance, and it does give me just the ohm symbol. So that's uh, one tenth of an ohm, which is acceptable. And most digital multimeters will say in the specs, you can have up to 0.5 ohms of resistance on your leads, and that's perfectly acceptable. I personally don't like to go much more than 0.2 ohms. 
but but they, it depends on the meter, I should say that. So let's take a measurement now. So I'll go on each side of this. Let me get over here where I don't get in your way. And you can see I'm getting 0.1 to 0.3. If I move it around, I give it, it changes a little bit. So it's 0.1, it's a pretty good connection. The next thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna to try to do this with two hands, and I'm gonna to try to move the pliers as I take a measurement, and you should see that the value of the ohms changing, and you kinda of do, and that's because this is an intermittent connection, and you can see as I move it, I'm changing the connection and the value changes. And that's exactly what we, you would see if you were troubleshooting and finding an intermittent connection on something, the resistance would change in value, and a really quality meter would pick that up in real time so you would detect that. It's, it's a very good troubleshooting tool. And now I'll set this off to the side, and I want to do a couple measurements. The first one is on tap water, and I'll drag this into place. This is from my tap at my sink, and uh, I expect a pretty high resistance. Water especially purified water, is not a very good conductor, and water only becomes conductive when you have minerals and salts in it. So we'll take a measurement of just this water and see what we come up with. And you can see it's pretty high. I have 147, 148, and you'll notice it's got a K in front of it, so it's kilo-ohms. So now it's gone all the way up to 200 and something. Let's just say it's 262, and that means it's 262,000 ohms of resistance. That's a very very high resistance. So I'll set this one off the side. And previously, I dissolved some salt into the same water, and I want to show you the difference it makes when you have minerals and salts in there as far as the conducti conductivity of it. So I'll do the same measurement with this water with salt in it, and you can see it's much, much lower resistance. It's like 30, well, we're gonna say it's 32. It's bouncing around a little bit. Let's just say it was 32, but it was kilo ohms again. So it was 32,000, considerably less than, than what we had with the purified water. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check out the links we have below. Come back for new videos. We should be adding content each week. And finally, visit the Taking Measure website.